We got 12 blades, five hooks. Got him. <laughs> oh, it's a big one too, dude. Monster, dude. Is that like a state record? Dude, it's great. That is unbelievable. Oh my God, look at that thing. Oh, it's bigger than 10. Yes! Let's go! What is up, MFers? I am so jacked for the video today. I don't usually make videos like this, but I felt like this one was absolutely warranted. For those of you guys that have been following my channel for a long time, you know, an emphasis in the Melican Fishing Channel has been bass fishing and chasing the biggest bass we can possibly catch. Now, a lot of you guys know that I lived in Nebraska. This year was absolutely crazy in 2021, last year that is, um, in that we moved the family down to Texas and I not only caught the biggest bass of my life, I had never caught a double digit bass and this year I caught eight double digit bass. Absolutely mind blowing, unbelievable. No idea at the start of the year that I'd be living in Texas right now, much less that I would catch a fish this caliber and I did it eight times and hopefully there's gonna be many more to come. So in today's video, we're gonna go over all eight of those double digit fish catches, give you guys some insight, kind of some, some reaction, some feedback about how I felt in the moment, how I feel now about them and give you guys some tips maybe that I wasn't able to share in the moment about how I caught those fish and some insight looking back about how I can maybe help you guys go catch the biggest bass of your life. So without further ado, let's jump into double digit number one. Fire up the old trusty laptop. I put a little compilation of all these fish together in order of when I caught them in the year. I'm gonna fire it up and we're just gonna talk about them as we roll through it. So the first one here, start the clip. Obviously we got the double Alabama rig, which we were catching them so good on the Alabama rig that I decided, you know, for video content and for experimentation, for scientific purposes, let's try out the double Alabama rig and see if we can get a bigger bite, if we can get more bites, if they'll eat it at all. I've never caught a fish on a double Alabama rig before. What happened next is absolutely unbelievable. If you add that all up, it equals donkeys. You doing it? You letting me throw it? The funny thing about this was, I was actually using Joe's rod. I tied it up on Joe's rod and I went to hand it to him. I was like, Joe, I just spent a year and a half tying this thing on with all the different jig heads, swim baits, all the different components. Let me at least throw it a few times just to see what it looks like and see what it feels like and what it looks like on pan optics. So I fired it out there and this happened. Got him. <laughs> oh, it's a big one too, dude. Oh. Immediately. Obviously knew this was a different caliber fish. And remember, I had not caught a double digit bass in my life prior to this point. So I'm fighting the fish, fight the fish. Joe's drag is locked down as tight as it'll freaking go. And this fish was just absolutely dogging me. I believe this one was um, in probably 15 to 20 feet of water. We are fishing a, a really awesome bite in some deep bushes. So the fish would suspend on these points over the top of these deep bushes. That is a giant dude. Ah! Get him! Oh, That's my oh, biggest yeah. ever! <laughs> look at that thing! Dude! <laughs> oh my God! Dude, look, get, get this Cole. <laughs> in his mouth. That was in his mouth. How big is that fish? <laughs> they were just ambushing like crazy. And the cool thing was, dude. It got so slick calm on this day. It was actually the day we were able to catch our five bass limit that weighed close to around, somewhere around 60 pounds. Best day of fishing of, of my life, maybe the best day I'll ever have. Uh, and, and so this was the, the first fish to really start that off that things started to get nutty. Yep. 11, 14, 11, 15s. 12 pounder. <laughs> God, dude. Oh, so big. Freaking 12. <laughs> Just shattered. That was my first double digit ever, dude. On a double A rig. On a <laughs> dude, that was like the second cast. The first cast. We had this fish we figured was around the 12 pound mark, low 12s um, on the scale, anyway. All right, let's hop into fish number two. Funny thing about this one, it was like 30 minutes later and it had completely slicked off. By this point, we had been catching fish, but Joe had been catching a lot more on the double A rig. We only had one tied up. So I was down back throwing the single A rig, just a little finesse Alabama rig. And I had switched up to some baits you'll see here in just a second. And those were a little tiny divine swim baits. We've been fishing some bigger three and a half, four inch swim baits. 
Um, but these were like see-through, really finesse-looking divine swim baits, and it was one of the multiple times we had worked through that area. We'd been through there several times, so I think that this was important to throw, you know, something a little bit more finesse. I'm big. Uh, it's like the one I just had. Lost or got in? Got in. It's in the live well. It's not quite as big, probably, but maybe close. The fine big. That is a big one. That's a giant, dude. <laughs> this is heaven! We're at head Lake Heaven, I called it. <laughs> oh my god, get out of the sticks. So, fighting this fish all the way to the boat. The I knew it was another big one, but I had no idea this that this time. next fish was actually <laughs> the same exact caliber <laughs> size as the one before Dude, it. I'm work, pulling right? so hard on this fish. It might be bigger than the last one. Oh my, it's there. not bigger, but there. it's a giant. <laughs> Gee, I can't even pick oh, it up. Oh my Holy God. God. <laughs> There's your pee pee. <laughs> That's <laughs> not even funny. Look oh at that. Oh my <laughs> God, dude. I told you when he got it. That's big. <laughs> that is. I love Joe's excitement. He, he only laughs like that, the wizard man, when he gets truly freaked out by something and that excited which does not happen that much we've got a lot of giant fish together there's the baits i was telling you guys about see-through i think uh ice something ice is the name of that color we got a bunch in stock at six cents gonna be another killer all winter for us this year i'm already catching them on the a-rig so i'm jacked about it the other one yesterday was the biggest bag the best day of fishing i've ever had and today we're destroying it. 11, 14, 12, right 12, on the money. Right 12 on, on the money. Yep. Two twins. <laughs> twins. Two 12s in the same day in the same Two spot. Two fish, 24 pounds in one spot. On. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, double digit number three. We don't have full cast to catch footage on this one, but um, we're right before the spawn phase, actually. Again, fishing a really clean lake. And again, fishing over the top of some, some cover that the fish were able to stage in before they moved up back into a spawning pocket. And so this fish was actually, again, on the A-Rig, um, but much different location. The first couple of fish we had caught, um, this is a few months later, this is in May, but the first few fish that I caught were in straight up wintering locations, deep points with, with brush and 20 to, 30, 20 to 35 feet of water. This one was much different. It was in like 10 feet of water, um, right on a main lake point, but right in front of a spawning pocket where I'm sure they'll just slide up to spawn. Oh, it's bigger than 10. Here you go. Wait, 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 wait. Go for it. Oh, yes. He's not as big as I thought he was, but he's a giant. Dude. I think there's like four or five of those up there is the crazy thing, dude. Look at that one. <laughs> make a lot of stupid noises when I catch giant fish apparently. Can't hate me for that, right? Dose divines. That's a big head. That's a big old girl. Once again, divine swim bait eater. Little 3.2 inch size. You just told me got two of the three that I had hooks on that time. Pretty badass. Tanks. Short. Short and giant. Look how fat these pre-spawners are. Zero. Oh. Dude, it keeps bumping. It's right at 10. I'd say that counts, right? 10.08. This is kind of a theme you guys will see in a lot of these fish, these videos um, with these fish was I did kind of get a little bit lucky this year in the fact that I think I had three of my double digits were under 10.1, so it's the luck of the draw. Those could have easily been nine sevens or whatever. I did catch a couple. Um, I'll give you a total tally uh, of how many sevens, eights, and nines I caught. But I did catch a couple in the nine and a half pound range too, I guess. Okay, double digit number four of the year. Moving on past the spawn to the post spawn period. Didn't get any uh, bed fishing or anything like that. Out with my buddy Jack York, absolute freaking hammer. Fishing a little offshore point with some hard spot on it. Fishing a single swimmer this time. So this is my first one, not on an A-rig. Fired it out there, it was sinking and that fish caught it on the fall. Jack had just had one chase his, his swim bait on live scope and he missed it. And it I don't know if it's the same one, but this fish was a freak 
probably the strongest fish I'd ever been pulled on by. These post-spawn fish fight so freaking hard, and um, man, this one was awesome. We got old confused eyeball. Dude, on the fall, I was just dicking around to come up here with you. Oh my god, that's a monster. Come here, freak. That's a strong fish. That is, man. I'm just going to let her go. Yeah, I can't see the bait or the hook. Here you go, dog. Oh my god. Come here, come here. <laughs> that one was so yes, long dude. when it jumped the first time i really thought that i probably had an 11 to 12 pounder oh on God, but like super long drawn eyeball. out from the spawn Holy and absolutely gosh. choked that swim bait dude, look at that swim bait <laughs> oh my god dude mega Woo. 1003 1003 <laughs> deal dude just oh, yeah. barely above that 10 pound mark I got lucky. She was definitely bleeding from uh, eating that swim bait so deep, but got her back right away. She kicked right off, so live to fight another day. Double digit number five of the year. This one was not a whole lot longer. I think probably three weeks to a month later. I think it was in June. Once again, offshore point, and this was probably the most fired up I've ever been about a fish catch because we had been fishing this spot on and off all day, and we kept seeing these giant fish cycling around and they would just nose up to the bait and touch it. They just wouldn't commit to the bait. And it was getting super frustrating. And it was hot as hell. I think it was like 100 plus degrees that day. These fish were, were there. We had them found in this spot. They just wouldn't pull the trigger. And so I kept telling Cole, I was like, timing, timing, timing. We got to come back to this spot. We got to keep coming back. Fired the single swimmer out there. Yes! Let's go! Just need a bigger one. Boom! <laughs> Dude, let me lift that one up. <laughs> Boom, yes! You see me? <laughs> Again, that. probably the most fired up I've been about a fish catch in my life, um, especially on this video. Yes. And it's not necessarily any bigger than any of the ones we caught, but like I said, oh, probably worked harder for that one, one um, oh, than I worked yeah. for any of the other ones. So it was, that's the moment we all dream for, right? What is it, 1002? 1006. 1006. Want to see a length on her real quick, Coleslaw? Yes, please. Let's put her on there and see how long she is. Someone rolling in on us. That gum freak. That was pretty darn close. Right, mouth shut. 26 and 3 quarter. Okay, moving on. Double digit number six. I think we're on six. This was a really cool one, a really different one. It is, it did end up being the biggest fish I've ever caught on a swim bait, on a glide bait in my life, a hard glide bait that is. And what we had going on here was we were fishing up another point once again, and the fish activity was super high all morning. We were throwing a spoon, a hair jig, um, typical baits around schooling fish, and they were slamming it. We were catching five, six, sevens. I think I caught one eight this day too. But then it slicked off. The sun got up and those fish really started to position either down tight on the very tip of the point on the bottom and just would not move on anything I was throwing or they were suspending and just barely cruising around. So I actually, I was using the Hinkle Shad here. I waited it just a little bit, but if you waited it too much and it was singing too fast, you know, you're, you're constantly gliding that bait through the water column. And when one's chasing it, I like to twitch it a few times so it darts back and forth. And a lot of times they'll, they'll eat it after it's sitting there. You twitch, twitch, and then they're, they're sitting there waiting for it. And that's usually when they pull a trigger, I find a lot of times, because they just can't stand it sitting there in their face. But if you wait it too much, it sinks too quickly and it turns them off. I've had a lot of fish nose up to that bait and, and really spook away from it quicker than they should have when I wait it too much. And so I was barely waiting it, probably to the point where it was sinking like a foot every three or four seconds. And these fish were in like 15 feet down over 20 to 25 feet so i was waiting like 45 seconds so i had to lead these fish to where they were slowly swimming to let that bait get down and then work the bait up to them and this was the first one i was actually able to to kind of catch and, and intersect with my bait after letting it sink forever mm. touched it giant
God damn. I'm just gonna have to grind this some bitch. I thought I was going to anyway. Look at that swell. This has gotta be a 10, doesn't it? Yeah, thank you, giant man. Probably should have grinded oh this one a little bit harder to the boat, given that it was on a treble hook, a big bait, but she stayed down. I mean, you never want to give fish a chance to turn their head, either bury themselves in cover or, or get up and jump and throw the bait. But I kept her moving a little bit, and since she was down and there was no cover for her to get snagged in, I was okay with fighting her a little bit, especially since I knew I got good hooks in her. Look at that beast. Look at that beast. So freaking jacked. Look at that big old beast. Made an adjustment. Couldn't get bit on the unnatural baits. The big spoon, the hair jig, they just aren't reacting to it. Bumping the line through once in a while. I decided I was gonna let this thing sink down. It sinks about about a Roth three you for the you even asked me for a cigarette. <laughs> yes, I asked Cole for a cigarette while it sunk. God dang. Freaking double digit four to ten oh ten three. So you got to call it a 10-1 at that point. Double digit number seven. Before we move on to this one, I'll let you know this was the biggest um, period in between fish catches, double digit fish catches um, of the year. This was just the other day, a couple weeks ago in December uh, on a little couple day trip. And I was fishing out offshore, some fall areas, I guess I would call it, um, off of a point, And I saw a giant wolf pack of seven or eight or nine or 10 of these bass coming, hauling ass towards me. It had been a tough day fishing, but I saw these fish and they were immediately hot. One chased it up. Um, it was cool. My bait was actually like five feet below the surface. They were probably 25 feet down, over 40 feet of water. My bait at the surface and I could tell them they perked up a little bit. I started reeling it. One just immediately started rising up to it. I don't know what happened to that one because I think I was panning around with my foot. But then uh, I was reeling a little bit further, nothing ate it, and then all of a sudden yeah, one of them just coming up. Oh straight vertical in the air. Oh, Bam! And then I smash them with the hook set this was a cool one too um once again it had been a long time since i had caught a double digit a lot of that was because i was off making different types of content not necessarily searching for giant bass specifically um another reason was um this is a cool fish because we used uh, a new prototype rod from a series that we're making at six cents and this was the first true giant i'd caught some sixes and sevens on it but i had not caught a double digit on this rod series yet and as you can see in the hook set and everything fighting this fish that rod is super parabolic loads up great it's going to be absolutely awesome for throwing these one and a half to four ounce baits um, both single hook treble hook just a really good bait for that and the alabama rig as well i'm going to use it all winter long Fighting this one first came up you can kind of see it there. It looked really really bronze. I thought it was a big smallmouth Was not a smallmouth as you guys could see ended up being the biggest bass of my life So jacked about this one. Oh my god Once again a little bit more merit in my brain anyways because I didn't catch on an a rig Not that there's anything against an a rig or anything like that I think it's a little bit foolish to think that it's a cheap method to use but a lot of people look down on it so Cool to catch on the single swimmer. Look how bad he is, Cole. Is that my biggest ever? Look how big its head is. Dude, I know. It's got like respucia eyes, too. Oh my god. It's pooping, weigh it. Oh my god, dude. Is it really? A little bit. Oh. Now, this was another one that um, I thought about taking in to get certified for a share lunker, which they have to be 13 pounds. I know that I don't have the friendliest scale a lot of times, um, so I, I didn't do it, but. I also kind of made the decision for myself, I'm not gonna turn in any share lunkers this year unless it's at a lake that is just getting blown out and everyone knows about, and it's not like it's secret. Last year we were fishing a lake, we caught our 60 pound limit out. I've still never said the name of that lake and I won't. Um, that lake got completely destroyed and almost didn't actually. Funny story, maybe I should make a video about how we almost didn't have that name get let out of the bag, um, but because the fish we thought was going to die it actually ended up coming out. So if you want to hear that story, um, definitely let me know. Maybe I'll make a video about it in the future. Maybe Zark should be around for that one because he was, a, obviously he caught the fish. It was the biggest part of that story. But you're gonna see the best part of this video right here of catching this fish and that is the strong kickoff and everything. Totally badass. Flash forward one whole day to my last double digit of the year, number eight. Once again, out there fishing in the middle of nowhere, saw a wolf pack. This one was only three or four fish. 
Um, I threw the single swimmer at him and one chased it and bumped it. And I just missed him. I made a bad cast at him. I threw it in front of him. They were coming at me and they just didn't catch up to it. They got pissed, turned around, started going the other direction, threw the A-rig out there. And uh, to my surprise, they were fired up and ready to eat it. One was anyways. I think two of them actually were, but one got it obviously. Fighting this fish in, I knew it was a big one. Yep. Um, I said something to Cole like, is this a state oh, record? Because the man. day before I caught that one, that was 25 and three quarter inches. Yeah. It was uh, 12 whatever, to low 12s. And I saw this one in the frame in the water and it was massive, so long get it up to the boat and unfortunately it wasn't as filled out as the day before but still an incredible fish dude there's four of them down there i threw the single by them twice they all like wanted it when it came up above them it wouldn't commit to them so i threw the damn it's like what do i throw the little single swim bait it's a more finesse but i did the opposite god look he's got his buddies down there with him too i don't know if this is a Oh my god, it's a monster, dude. Is that like a state record? Cole, camera down, I think, for this guy. I oh, don't know, he's not. He's not 10, though. <laughs> he's, he's a big one, dude. He's a long one. He's a big one. Huge, huge frame and body and everything. Just uh, not quite the belly and everything like the guy yesterday. 10.08 to 10.48. And it will not set. <laughs> That's it's a 10 pounder. Another monster. Look at that one. How long is that one? Cold 26 inches? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Well, now that we're through those fish, let me tell you guys some statistics for my fishing in 2021. After I went back, I looked at all the footage, all the videos I filmed, and I got some numbers. Um, I spent 31 days specifically targeting trophy largemouth bass. Not to say I didn't fish for them more days because of course I did bank fishing videos and stuff where I could have caught a giant bass, but I'm talking about taking the boat out, specifically fishing big fish baits and big fish areas where I was fine with not getting 20, 30, 10, five bites a day even. A lot of times I was searching for the big one. So I ended up catching three fish over 12 pounds, eight fish over 10 pounds, 22 fish over eight pounds, and I, I got somewhere in the ballpark of 60 to 70 over seven pounds. Didn't have an exact number there because I didn't end up weighing uh, some of the seven pounders, which is just mind blowing to me. All in all, unbelievable year. I'm super grateful that I live in a state that puts this much emphasis on big bass habitat and sustaining future populations. The great thing is I kind of just scratched the surface. I really just learned a lot of these lakes. I didn't actually go and just beat one to death. I didn't want to go fish the same lake over and over. You don't learn anything. I always tell you guys that you don't learn anything fishing the same bait, same style, same spot, same same everything all the time. You got to get out and get yourself uncomfortable and, and try new stuff, new baits, new lakes. And that's really what I did since I moved down here uh, to Texas at the start of April is I tried a bunch of different new lakes and I ended up going back to a couple um, a few times, but besides that, I've only scratched the surface. There's hundreds, if not thousands of lakes. I don't know of anybody that went out and, and caught this many double digits. Should I, I think in all of YouTube and all the YouTube videos, I don't know if there was eight other double digit bass caught combined in 2021. So super proud of the accomplishments. Not gonna say I'm a better person or fisherman or anything than, than anybody else, but I was super glad I was able to put it on film mainly because of my man Coleslaw. If I was by myself out there, I probably would have not had the camera on, screwed something up, deleted footage that had these fish on them or something. But shout outs to Coleslaw for crushing these edits all year long. The, the big bass footage, couldn't have done without him. And so excited moving forward. I don't know what my goal should be for 2022. You guys need to let me know down below. What do you think I should shoot for in 2022? I'm of course going to try to catch the biggest bass possible. I would love to catch the Texas state record. That would be a mythical rare unicorn, obviously. I mean, there's tens of thousands of bass fishermen in this state, more so than any other state, I believe, by quite a lot um, from what I see on my analytics anyways. So to catch the biggest bass ever would be unbelievable. It'll probably get broken soon and probably get broken after that. But Regardless, I, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think I should chase. And thank you guys so much for supporting and watching all the videos in 2021 all these videos and everything else i do i'm always open to suggestions comment down below and if you guys have any suggestions of somewhere you think i need to go in texas that you know about you think it's a little sneaky place comment below or, or send me a, a dm or something and uh maybe you'll see me out there one day maybe i'll come fish with you but thanks for watching some efforts money here peace